We've got to be inspired by those who have been through this. We've got to not be ignorant on how prevalent it is, okay? And we got to have kind of a call to duty and a call to action about what we're going to do to, to mix it up. Arizona Senator Martha McSally continues to shine a light on the dark topic of sexual assaults. It's a cause that hits close to home for the retired Air Force pilot. McSally recently admitted she was sexually assaulted by a superior while serving. She addressed the attack yesterday at the U.S. Naval Academy, saying she hopes to inspire those who have also gone through horrifying experiences. Joining us live in Studio 12A this morning, Senator Martha McSally. Thanks for waking up early for us, Senator. Absolutely. We'll start with that. Since yeah. your revelation <laughs> about what happened to you during the time that you served in the Air Force, has anything changed? Well, thanks for having me on this morning. Uh, these are not easy issues for anybody to talk about, um, but I felt like as someone who's a public figure, it was really important for me to share my experiences. One in three women and one in four men, according to the CDC, have been sexually assaulted in their lifetime. So this is hiding in plain sight. Uh, since then, uh, the military has really sprung into action uh, at my demand uh, that they need to step up to a new level to address the issue in the military. They formed a task force that I asked them to form. They held the summit that I spoke at yesterday with all the service secretaries and chiefs and 120 universities talking about routing out sexual assault across universities and military academies. I've charged them that by the time we mark up the defense bill at the end of May, that we need some action, like we need some improvements. Don't just do in incremental stuff, like what else can we do to take care of victims, to stop this from happening, to make sure we've got the best quality investigations and that justice can be served with due process. And so they're working pretty hard in a way that I've not seen them in my lifetime. With so many people, both men and women, as you just mentioned, victimized by this, why would anyone have confidence in commanders that they might finally understand the big issue at hand here? Well, look, commanders in the military are responsible for things that it's very difficult to compare in civ civilian society. I was a commander. You know, we are responsible to make sure that men and women are ready to go into combat, if necessary, give their lives, if necessary, take lives. We're responsible for the culture of that unit. We're responsible to make sure everybody is cared for. Everything that goes there, anything that undermines that, undermines the mission, readiness, and the way we treat each other. So commanders need to be more responsible and accountable to stop this from happening and to make sure justice is served. It shouldn't be taken away from them, but they need to step up and do more, which is what my charge is. Thank you for taking a stand and for your bravery on this issue. We've got to get to some other hot topics that are, are gracing the headlines right now. There's a crisis at our southern border. We've been talking about it for a long time. You held a meeting Monday yep. focused on dealing with the migrant crisis, especially <laughs> how it relates to us here in Arizona. Yeah. Can you tell us anything that came out of that meeting? Yeah, sure. Just for the numbers, we've seen unprecedented numbers of those crossing illegally. And because of loopholes in our laws, it's just drawing more and more people. So 100,000 just this month crossing illegally and 18,500 just let into the streets of Arizona just in the last three months. So it is overwhelming local communities, uh, elected officials, the non-governmental organizations that are trying to help these people. Uh, but ultimately, our part is in Congress. We've got to close these legal loopholes uh, that are actually drawing the cartels to recruit more people to take this dangerous journey. Uh, from that meeting, we wanted better communication and coordination between Border Patrol, ICE, and the NGO community that's trying to help. They really are at their max, and they're limited by law. They can only keep people if they have a child with them for 72 hours, and in a crisis, up to five days. And they're barely able to process them in that time, and that's why when they hit that legal point, they got to let them go. So I think there's been more understanding of what the challenges are, and we need increased coordination. And on that same topic, um, how does the president's declaration actually help this huge problem that we're all very much aware of. Well, you cast a vote in favor for this. By our numbers, there are 22,000 migrants since Christmas that have been dumped yeah. into Phoenix, busload yep. by busload by busload. Right. Does that declaration help at all? Uh, so, you know, we're on track to like a million people this year actually crossing illegally is the issue. And so, look, the, we need the resources to secure the border. Uh, again, these people are not coming through the ports of entry, what we're talking about here. They're crossing illegally. They're being apprehended. Many of them then say that they are asylum seekers. Less than 10% actually have legitimate asylum cases cases if they ever do show up for the court gates court dates what they've realized is if they have a kid 
that they're going to be let go. And we're hearing now stories of them recycling children back to Central America. This is a humanitarian crisis. It's a security crisis. We need the resources to secure the border, but Congress only can close these legal loopholes that are actually drawing and incentivizing this activity. I had legislation in the House to do this. We need to stop playing politics with it and get it done. Well, we've got to get to one more topic yeah. here before we let you go. Um, Health care, obviously, it's, been yeah. a, a, it's going to be a big issue in 2020. Do you support the Trump administration's decision to back that lawsuit that would repeal the affordable Affordable Care Act. The GOP says they're going to wait until 2020 to deal with this, but do you support that decision to back the lawsuit? Uh, look, that, that's their decision. What I've been uh, focusing on is making sure that people have affordable health insurance, that we bring down the cost, that there's more choices. Uh, the Democrats obviously agree that Obamacare is not working, which is why they're supporting government-run health care and getting rid of private insurance, as you hear some of the presidential contenders. I meet people all the time that have pre-existing conditions that can't get access to health insurance under Obamacare. Small business owners, people who are retiring, like people in all sorts of circumstances. So I'm focusing on what can we do that provides more options, more choice, brings down the cost of prescription drugs, and provides those choices for patients and their families. What's best for them? We have to figure this out. It's impacting every single family in America, and it's like a top issue for our constituents. We've got to protect pre-existing conditions. We've got to bring down the cost and provide more choice. Are you willing to say in a word that the, the insurance uh, model is broken right now? Yes, it absolutely is, and we've been saying that for many years. Uh, that Look, Obamacare tried to fix what we knew was broken before, people being denied insurance, or being dropped from their insurance, we can't go back there. But their model isn't working. So we need to look forward to what provides more choices at lower costs with you know more information for patients to be able to choose what's best for their families instead of a one size fits all uh, so that they can care for their families and people with pre existing conditions can get the coverage and the care that they need. That's been my focus and I'll keep doing that going forward. All right, Senator Martha McSally in house tackling the tough issues on today and easy. Thank you so much for being in studio with us. Thanks a lot.